I think there's this idea that in visual effects, you have this sort of magical idea of what it's going to be, or people say, oh, you just press a button, you know, you just, you just make this stuff happen. But it, it really is as messy as sort of every other part of the filmmaking process, and it touches every other part of the filmmaking process. The Statue of Liberty sequence was quite complex. The idea of the Nazis destroying the Statue of Liberty is they're destroying a symbol of American ideals and of American history. So in typical Nazi fashion, they do it in a very showy way. They do it with a fireworks show, they do it with uh, jets flying over, with colored smoke uh, out the back. There's uh, music, there's film crews there to capture the event. I mean, they want it to read as this big public spectacle. There's the technical of it as well, which is that airplanes on their own firing missiles at the Statue of Liberty would not bring it down. They have to ensure that this goes off without a hitch. The statue is actually rigged for demolition. After the missiles hit, you see a shot from overhead where there's a ring of explosives going off around the base. It's this combination of, of sort of pragmatism and showmanship. And we watched a lot of videos of, of stadium demolitions because they have these sort of round cylindrical shape that the explosives go around in a circle and we tried to replicate that in what we did for the Statue of Liberty. We tried to show the Statue of Liberty falling over. We want to see the, the torch break off and sink into the water and the, they were able to do this in previs because they can sort of animate the statue to do whatever they need it to do but it didn't necessarily make sense physically liberty island has a wide enough radius that if the statue just tipped over it wouldn't get to the edge of the island and so we had to create a situation whereby it sort of slid down the rubble as the base was collapsing it slid down the rubble to the point where when it fell the arm was sticking out just far enough to break off it was this combination of hand animation and dynamics simulation to get that to all work and that combined with you know the smoke and the missile trails and the airplanes and fireworks illuminating everything and then the water simulation there was there were all these moving parts and it also had to sort of make sense in the context of the story we have done crowd duplication in a number of different ways uh, for the show in season two the Volkshall has I think 150,000 people in it. We came up with a fairly novel system for that because everyone is more or less stationary. They're standing in ranks or in bleachers that utilized uh, pre-rendered sprites of characters with a crowd tool that we developed for Nuke. So we created this workaround where even though the individual characters are rendered in 3D, they were replicated in Nuke. I love working in visual effects because every day presents a unique challenge. Something that I've never dealt with before, never even thought of in some cases. There's always an opportunity to learn new things. There's always an opportunity to create new things. And it's very exciting to receive a challenge and have to start at, I don't know how we're gonna do this. The only consolation that I have is that there have been things in the past that I didn't know how to do that we figured out how to do. You know, there's this idea that it's magic, like visual effects is magic, right? Nobody thinks about the fact that everything that you're doing is inventing stuff, creating stuff, solving problems. I really enjoy the problem solving aspect to it and every day is a new challenge.